You get ready. Up. Let me you like top. lick your lips and shit. What are you top. trying to make your lips shiny for? Huh? Let me top. Hey guys, welcome back to our channel. For those of you guys joining us for the first time, welcome. We're glad that you're here and we're glad that you're gonna check it out. Today we're gonna talk about some common questions and misconceptions that we get about homeschool. I particularly get many questions because I'm out in the community working. I feel like I'm talking down to you like, oh, and you don't. <laughs> well, I'm more in the social media community oh, my of homeschooling. So yeah, I get quite a bit of questions too, but it's not not like the questions Rabs is good. So if you would like to hear the most common misconceptions we kind of have to defend on a regular basis between the two of us, just go ahead and keep on watching. So I think the most obvious question is always like, but how are they gonna make friends? How are they gonna socialize? They're just gonna be at home together. Like, that's weird, you know? Homeschooling's weird to some people. They don't understand it. We get it, you know, it was weird to us. We never planned on this, so it just kinda, we kinda are learning along too. But what we've definitely realized is that no matter what your schooling experience might be, whether you went to public school or private school or charter school or you're homeschooled, that you're going to be at the level of socialization that you're comfortable being. If you're an introvert, you're gonna naturally just be an introvert just because you are exposed to large groups of kids every single day because you go to school doesn't automatically mean that you're going to socialize in a positive way. Socialization is not always a positive thing either whether they're extroverts or introverts so that's what's so interesting to see is the differences among our children as an example jetty is super curious and aware and asks questions and is very direct and upfront versus sissy um she's a little bit more reserved and is very meticulous about what she's going to say and what she's going to do and her image so seeing that and picking up on that is something that we really enjoy. You really get to know your children, who they are, the little cues that they give and, and aspects about them that really kind of highlight their personality. And that's, again, something that's very unique and special to be able to do. Here at home, we're able to sit down and really you know, tease apart the emotion that they're feeling and how to handle it in a positive, effective way. All of that to say that kids are going to be who they're going to be no matter if they go to public school or they're homeschooled as far as being socialized or an introvert or an extrovert. Right, misconception number two. We're going to call misconception number two COVID schooling. That virtual learning that is still following a school curriculum is the same as homeschool. Because of COVID. Because yeah. of COVID. So I personally yeah. talk to people at work that say, oh, my, my grandkids hate it. My kids hate it. So that that's the first misconception about that is a lot of people think like, oh, that's what homeschooling is. And it's not at all. You know, homeschooling, first of all, is whatever works for your family. If your kids are, you know, like techie, they like the virtual schooling, you can find a virtual school to continue homeschooling in that way. I know a lot of like more higher grades do that, um, but that's fine. You know, we're not saying that that's wrong or anything, but we're saying that because of COVID and a lot of people were kind of forced to homeschool, virtual school learning, distance learning, uh, that that's how they feel like homeschool is. And that's the, the way that it is. When it's it's not at all, you know, and you can, there's so many ways to homeschool. So this one is like the OG reason people kind of started homeschooling. They wanted their kids to learn about the Bible and God and being at school seven hours a day without it being taught in schools because separation of church and state technically, but even though the Pledge of Allegiance says under God and they make all the kids say it at school, that's besides the point, but some parents wanted <laughs> their kids to, <laughs> Some parents just wanted, you know, to homeschool their kids so that they could teach them more about their religion. Personally, that was a big misconception originally for us 
when we first started researching homeschooling, we realized like, you know what, well, we can just make it our own. Like I started homeschooling with the good and the beautiful. And you know, I don't use them anymore, but you know, I had to just censor a lot of stuff because it was just like a little too much for me at times. And our kids know about God and we tell them like, yeah, you know, some people believe in God and you know, they believe that he did this and this and this. And a lot of things that we tell them, they're kind of like, they rationalize yeah, they, it in their head. I don't know what they think, but they think it's made up and it's like, just sounds very impossible. And you know, we try not to be very critical of anything. We just like to be honest with them and give them, you know, information in an age appropriate way. And then, you know, they kind of make their, their own analysis. But yeah, definitely homeschooling is definitely expanding. It's not just for religious families. And I'm really happy about that. I get um, asked all the time, is so what do you kids do do they just like read the bible and like do chores all day or are they just playing video games and watching tv all day so i think that's a, a major misconception about what's actually done and that goes back to like how you raise your kids and how much control do you have and you know unfortunately a lot of people that i've encountered say my kids don't listen to me my kids don't do this or that and i don't know we've just structured an environment that you know we have a two-way conversation and really find out what's going on and, and try to explore their feelings so kind of like what really goes down is that we have certain habits that have developed over time and now the girls know when it's a school day we put it on the calendar and they know they wake up and do their morning work and between morning work they have breakfast so they kind of develop a routine another tool that has really helped us is setting alarms and giving us gentle reminders of what's going to happen so of course they have ipad time i mean what screen kid, time or yeah. screen time what kid doesn't have screen time unfortunately it's just part of our society now so we built that screen time in there based on some of their chores and some of their daily habits that they need to complete before they go on. So that's kind of how it happens in the real world is just staying organized and kind of planning ahead, but also making them part of that decision and part of giving them choices. You know, we kind of leave it up to them, but it is semi quasi structured with different times and lives. We do have them do their chores i guess for the day and they alternate chores every day and their chores are very simple they're nothing crazy and maybe we'll do a whole other video just kind of going into that but that's kind of the ticket if you will oh. Oh, sorry. <laughs> to have their screen time or their nintendo time and maybe we'll do a part two mm -hmm. if we come for up sure, with a few sure. more i'm sure there's a lot more misconceptions but yeah that's it for today, guys. Thank you guys so much for watching, and we'll see you in the next one. Bye.